morning or oh, there's some rain overnight it's some really nice weather but I think that's the end of it I'm going to go wind your bends shall I? or shall I go straight? no I'll go no I'll go straight <laughs> did you think I was going to say wind your bends? I'm early you'll have noticed I'm about to 45 minutes earlier than I normally am. Let me just get my mirror sorted out. That's because I'm having a bit of a funny day at the moment. Now we're going to talk about... I've just put in my automatic wing mirror. Turn off my air conditioning. Who put the air conditioning on, I'll never know. <coughs> because that doesn't work. Long, long since vanished into the ozone layer, that. So, yeah, so... Let me tell you about my mad life at the moment, okay? My next door neighbour died. An elderly gentleman. Known him for 20 years, obviously as a neighbour. Lovely bloke. Always willing to help you out. Oh, which I mean, help you out of your walnuts, help you out of your hazelnuts, help you out of your apples. So, he is, his funeral's coming up, and I was told, in fact, I can prove I was told, because it was done on the WhatsApp, that his funeral's on the 23rd. And then, yesterday, I found out that that was a typo, and in fact, his funeral's not on the 23rd, it's on the 13th which is today, right? So, I've had to reorder my day. Now, it just so happens that today I have got probably the biggest job I've had all year, which is a guy who needs to come in to have six crowns, one three-unit bridge, and his buy opened. So, There, there you are, you've got irresistible force meets a movable object. So, I've now had to move, I've now had to ask him to come in an hour earlier, he was coming in at 9, so he's coming in at 8. Well, and hopefully I'll get away by about 10.30, in time for the funeral at 12, in time to get back for the afternoon patients at 2. So you have the entire morning booked off. So there we are. That's the worst of the dodging down this road. Yeah. So uh, so I've got a very weird day. I've got to go to work, do some of my finest work, get home, change into my weeds. Mirror, a signal. Over. Sorry about that. There's a problem. <laughs> There's a problem with a this is the junction of death coming this way, right? And the problem is, it's a dual carriageway and the speed limit is 60 miles an hour. And if you pull out, you have to slow down. And if you then pull out and then something starts coming around the corner, 60 miles an hour, you have to get a wiggle on. And I've seen, we've seen, haven't we? I've seen accidents. I've recorded accidents at that junction before. So. So really, you have to do, if you see a car right at the last minute, you have to do a rocket, a rocket start. In the interest of safety, uh, you know. So, the other thing is, I want to say a few words about seeing patients who are being seen by other dentists. In other words, sharing the care of patients. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about people who've had turkey teeth, although this might apply. But it's just generally the tendency of people to go to more than one practitioner 
Uh, it's more difficult if you're both doing the same thing. Like, for example, if someone just wants to retain their entitlement to NHS treatment, so they, they carry on seeing their NHS dentist while coming to see you as well. So, you know, perhaps getting you to do a checkup and then going back to their NHS dentist to get the work done or whatever. But more commonly, uh, you've got a patient who... Rustling noise. You've got a patient who... Uh, See what I mean about the cars um, to accelerate. Mind you, they've got a better view. Now, you've got a patient who, for example, is going to see an implantologist for their implants and comes to see you for the rest of their basic dentistry. And then the problem, problem with that is compounded if, as in this case, the patient's dentist is in a far, far away country, uh, speaks a far, far away language. So it's helped by the fact that the patient is a translator of that language so uh, you know you might think that that's a that's an advantage but in fact I'll show you why it isn't so basically it's uh, someone who's had implants done and one of the implants got infected and so she came back to us with uh, the two unit bridge basically both two apartments joined together on two implants now I've no I've said before in Eastern European countries they tend to do this, they tend to join everything up so that if any one of the apartments fails then the whole blooming thing's in trouble. In, in the UK we tend to do things individually which means that if anything fails then that you can just sacrifice that one unit, that one tooth or something. So she's got this two unit bridge on two apartments, two implant apartments, one of which is heavily infected, not heavily but you know, chronically infected there's only as only implants can be and uh, so I took an x-ray of it and she then asked me to send the x-ray to her dentist which I did um, which I think was her biggest mistake because then they gave me her dentist's contact details and then he wrote back to me and said basically that what she told me was her version of the truth and he had another version of the truth so then she came in and said that uh, she'd been in, in touch with her dentist because this infection hadn't cleared up. Been in touch with her dentist and she'd explained to him what I'd said. Uh, that it wasn't the implants, it was the tooth next door. And I said, that's absolutely not what I said. We haven't even discussed the tooth next door. I definitely think it's the implants. So. Uh, so there, so there you've got <laughs> you've got a translator who's not doing a very good job of translating. Probably the the, the words are getting translated, but li the meaning's literally not. And uh, you know, she said, "Oh, she said, well, there's obviously been some massive failure of communication, you know." Whereas, whereas in fact, there hadn't been between the dentist and me. We were both pretty clear. In fact, I let her read the transcript of my conversation with her implantologist who told me about the fact that she was a bit allergic to taking antibiotics, if not to the actual antibiotics. Anyway, uh, so my plan, which I think is a, an excellent plan, is just to uh, keep things simple and wind back to the uh, basics and take the uh, buttons off the top, take the bridge off the top and, and reseal the implants back under the skin and give them three to six months to uh, integrate properly, you know, without the exposure to the bacteria in the mouth. And, uh, you know, if anything's going to save it, then that will. If not, then I'll just have to cut the bridge in half and, and we'll keep the back part and not use the front. And she'll have to have a gap, but um, oh, does she not like that? And also, does she not like the fact that it's the first time anyone's told her that she can't have what she wants? So, which is a bit easier for me because it wasn't me that did the work. So I don't have to sort of uh, try and maintain the fact that everything is going brilliantly. But, um, so. But um, no, what she's offered to... Uh, 
do what she knows how to do, you know, which is what she does best, which is to hold a, a teleconference between me and the and the dentist in Russia, where she's going to translate uh, for us. But um, I don't think that's a good idea. The main thing I don't think it's a good idea is because she's an interested party. She's a stakeholder in all this. Yeah. Secondly, she's uh, uh, got a track record at both ends of slightly bending, of bending the truth of, of the situation. And thirdly, uh, she's got a history of non-compliance with uh, taking antibiotics, both uh, with me and with her Russian dentist. She's just got this big thing about antibiotics. And uh, and so I think, uh, and all you know, and also she is again in the sort of in a well-meaning way trying to micromanage everything and make sure that things turn out in the best possible way for her. But 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 I mean the problem is that she uh, is judging that through her lens, which is the lens of what she wants and what she would like and not through the clinical lens of what's achievable, what's possible and what's got the best chance of success. So, I think I'm probably going to turn down that very kind offer and suggest that I continue to liaise with the Russian dentist. I run past my uh, my uh, plan to resubmerge these implants and then <clears throat> she's got some antibiotics off of me which I don't think she's taken. So if she persists in not taking them, then fine. That will reduce the success rate. If she takes them, then it might slightly increase the success rate, but I'm not holding my breath. Time for some new windscreen wipers. Here's another tip. I found out yesterday, I had a lovely lady in, a friend of the receptionist or something, you know, come along because it's been recommended. Had a, got to the situation where she had a bridge, which was on a really short post at one end, which became detached. And then the, uh, the other abutment at the other end, which was a, I don't know, I think it was a root treated tooth that have been filed down to for the bridge without a post. So that, of course, snapped. So then the bridge got loose, and so we stuck it in for her until we could make her a little partial denture. And um, fitted it yesterday, and it's a lovely job. It's, I mean, it's a superb colour match. What we're doing is we're doing a mould matching on the, uh, on the teeth now, so everything's looking really nice. And... You know, it really was a, a superb job, but um, I uh, was just putting everything away like immediately after she left, and it occurred to me that we had these teeth that um, most technicians would have just chucked them in a drawer, you know, because they could use them for additions and stuff like that. But uh, a twenty-five pound a set, it's really not, you know, it's not the end of the world if you have to get some teeth in for an addition. So. Well, I, mean, I know it is on the health service because I know, I know the way things work. But what I mean is that, you know, what, what we do, if you go to our fee scale online, you'll see what we charge two fees for an addition. One is for an uh, 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 addition of a stock tooth, which is basically one that, you know, we have to have in, in the cabinet. And uh, we charge uh, more for an addition of a bespoke tooth, which is one that we've measured up and order in uh, particularly. So the stock tooth is likely to be uh, the, the right shade or nearly the right shade, perhaps one removed, and it's likely to be the right tooth or nearly the right tooth. Like for example I've stuck a lower, I've stuck an upper eight on where uh, to, as an addition in a lower right five denture the other day because it just happened to be the right size for the gap and the patients honestly they don't they don't look at the teeth to that extent. So, and it looked good when it was finished. Home, yeah. So, uh, so I thought, you know what I'll do? This might be a good service. I'll, if we said to the patients, look, you know, you've got a denture, 
and it's very flexible. You can have, by which I mean adaptable, you can have extra teeth added on. A lot of people don't know that. You may have a denture and then if you lose another tooth, you can have that added on. You don't need to pay out for a new denture again. So who is the person, the one person, who, who probably would be best looking after all the teeth? And that is the patient, isn't it? Might as well give them all the teeth. So that if they need to have one added on, they can say to the dentist, actually, I've got the, all the teeth that go with this denture. Anyway, uh, we, uh, so I went out and knocked on the window of the car and said, uh, you know, I've just had an idea, you know, these teeth are no use to me really. Uh, you might as well have them because they're, they're more used to you. And, and then I noticed that she was crying and which sort of uh, took me aback a bit because when she was in the surgery, she was all right, quite normal, you know. And when she left, she was quite normal. <coughs> but then I think when she'd left the surgery, all the stress and anticipation and, uh, you know, being sitting there and being frightened about having teeth out, etc., etc., uh, had just all come out. And, and she's just like, also... Oh, also, plus the fact that it was the first time she'd had to wear a denture and obviously she probably didn't ever think that she wanted to wear a denture, etc, etc. Uh, it all come out and, and so she was like a bit tearful. And then having me knocking on the window and saying, oh, by the way, here's all the rest of your teeth, uh, your plastic teeth, for when you're going to need them, uh, probably, probably didn't help her mood much. <laughs> so, so... I still think it's a good idea. Uh, I think I think it's a good idea. <laughs> but, uh, what I would probably do is I will say to the patients in advance, like you know, part of the deal is we make you the denture and then we give you all the all the extra teeth that you might need. You know, it comes with all the up all the upgrades, <laughs> which you might not need. But I don't know what sort of message it says to the patient when you say, well. You know, you've got a three tooth denture, and by the way, here's the other seven teeth. <laughs> you're more or less, you're more or less saying, well, you're on a road to full dentures, mightn't you? Which might not be a bad thing. Do you know what I mean? It might be, you might be, you know, it might be, they might be like, oh, well, in that case, I'm going to make it my ambition not to need those teeth. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll have to have a think a bit more about it. But it did shock me a bit because she was in tears. I never really thought of my patients leaving the surgery cheerful and then bursting into floods of tears in the car park. That's the, that's the first time I've seen that happen. Oh, go on. Yeah, go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on, sorry, not you. You're too ugly. This bit of road here, there's lots of roads. See on the right here, there's lots of traffic merging and we, we all let each other out of the side roads on this because it's a nightmare otherwise. This is a real choke point uh, for traffic coming into uh, Ramsgate. And you'll see from all the building that's going on up ahead that uh, this is only gonna really get 10 times worse. So on the right here, there's some offices and they're building in the what was the sort of the car park in front of the offices and there's a, a car wash there on the left there's a big estate going up there on the left th this is the schools and surgery on the left here is a big estate that's already gone up over the roundabout to the right is a big estate and beyond that another big estate and over the roundabout to the left here you can see is another big estate and beyond that, on the left, another big estate. So you can imagine what that road's going to be like in about five years' time. People say to me, you know, is it good that you're going to be surrounded by houses? All these new patients, you know, people, all you've got to do is sit in that surgery and, and you're going to get all these new patients. And I'm like, they won't have any money. <laughs> They're not my demographic. Young people who can just barely afford to pay the mortgage. 
They're not going to come in and have a load of private work, are they? Bring their children. <coughs> so, so actually, I had the same thing with them um, when I worked in Tankerton, which is between Whitstable and Herne Bay. And Whitstable and Herne Bay were creeping towards each other. There was a place called Swale Cliff in the middle. And uh, I had an idea that one day Whitstable and Herne Bay would all join up and I'd be banging in the middle of it, you know. But uh, these things happen over on tectonic plate like uh, speeds. So I'm not holding my breath about anything. Right, so what have we covered today? Seeing patients who've got two dentists, tricky, but not impossible. Uh, Another new innovation, giving people their denture teeth. Hey, I'm just full of innovation, me. But I don't know how they're gonna take it, so I'll have to discuss it with a few more patients before we introduce it. But, you know, I mean, I think it's a service that no one else is doing. And then, uh, and lastly, uh, uh, where you situate your surgery, you know, go for go for high foot fall now, and not high foot fall in, uh, in 20 years time, because, uh, by the time you, if you hold your breath and wait for it, you're, you're going to go blue and die. Okay. All right. Nice to talk to you. Bye.